Hello, I'm Dr. Manita Rattan, and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of color. As you know, I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So you guys have asked me to make this video so many times, and I'm so glad finally I get to sit down and make this one for you. And it's how do you read the inky list, the ingredients list, I-N-C-I, that's what it's called. So at the back of any cosmetics that you have, so this is the Dr. V Facial Pigmentation Kit, for example, at the back, you will have the product ingredients list in descending order of ingredients. So we're gonna go through the inky so that you know what is in your product. Having done almost 200 videos for YouTube, I have seen that there is a glaring gap between the marketing on the front of the packaging and the actual ingredients in it. There have been so many times where I've seen an anti-aging product or an anti-pigmentation product and you know the marketing really goes to town on this and then you turn and you think this is just a moisturizer with loads of fragrance in it like <laughs> there's nothing in here there's no actress in here to achieve you know what they are saying this cream will achieve and actually there's no law against it either because it comes under cosmetics, it doesn't come under medicine. And so actually the onus is on us in order to become educated on skincare ingredients. And that's what this whole channel is about, is about education and empowerment for our skin of color family globally. It's a reference library for us and for our children. And as you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored. This is just a place for you to come and learn. And then if you've watched more than 10 of my videos, you are invited to come and join our private Facebook group called um, Dr. V Inky Hackers, I-N-C-I Hackers, because it's a type of person who watches, you know, 10 of these videos. You are able to read more than 50% of your ingredients list. You don't waste money on marketing. You have the best skin of your life and you tend to educate your loved ones around you on their skincare too. It really is a type of person who's a Dr. V Inky Hacker. So if that's you, um, please can you write down Dr. V Inky Hacker below and also come and join us on Facebook. I remember when I first started my apprenticeship as a cosmetic formulator and I found the length of the names so intimidating. Plus I'm dyslexic, so it just made it that much harder. What I found really helped me was categorizing ingredients. So is it a solvent that something is meant to dissolve into? Is it an emollient where you're smoothing the, the edges of skin cells? Is it an active where something is being done to the skin such as retinol or vitamin C? Is, an, is it an antioxidant? So there are many different categories and it just makes it a lot easier because you're able to group them and so mentally think okay so this would make sense and the more you read them the the more comfortable you're going to feel. Right now I'm going to basically break down the categories for you so you know what to look for and whereabouts it should be. So this means that at the top uh, usually if it's a cream, aqua, so water is going to be the number one ingredient. And you expect that to be at about 70, 80 percent. Um, and then we're going to go through the different percentages. Roughly, you expect the next ones to be. So that's the is in descending order. So basically, the ingredient with the highest percentage is right at the top and the ingredients with the lowest percentages are at the bottom. Sometimes to make things a little bit more confusing, they even write plant extracts in Latin. So for example, sweet almond oil, prunus amygdalus dulcis oil. Now, when it comes to labeling, cosmetics made in the EU must follow EU cosmetic law. In the US, it follows the FDA Acts for Cosmetic Products. Now, EU law, is actually more strict than FDA. So I'm gonna start off by telling you what the FDA wants you to put on the packaging, and then I'm gonna tell you the difference and what EU wants you to put on the packaging. And so, generally speaking, EU is the strictest uh, guidance globally for cosmetics. You know, we talk about cruelty-free, everything made in the EU legally has to be cruelty-free. You cannot test on animals, which is why when you, for example, say made in the UK, you don't really need to write under that, you know, cruelty-free because it would be illegal to do anything 
else. Right, so with FDA, all they require is the name of the product, the net contents of how much ingredient is inside. So you have to write that usually in mils at the back. The inky list, so that's the ingredients in descending order, that's I-N-C-I. And then the warning label. So for example, if it's a vitamin A, you often say avoid in pregnancy or when lactating, for example. Now, EU cosmetic regulation would also say that you also need to have the name and address of the distributor. So for example, this would be mine at the bottom. Um, you have to have the maximum time you can use it while it's open. So here it, you have a little icon and how many months you can use it while it's open. You also have to have a batch number, which you will find. Um, and then obviously the country of origin too. So EU does require a lot more than even the FDA. Now, when it comes to ingredients, they are in descending order. And why, why is this important? Because you want to see if your ingredients are in the therapeutic index. It's a little bit like me saying to you, okay, so you need two anodin extras for your headache, but actually if I just give you a quarter of one, is that going to be effective? Unlikely, but guess what? I can still say I've given you anodin extra. So that's what they can do with packaging. You can say, oh, it's a pigmentation cream, but you can turn over, there's no tyrosinase inhibitors in it or any anti-pigmentation ingredients in it. So that's why it's important. So not only should it be in the ingredients, it should be high up enough for it to be in the therapeutic index. Now on the flip side, there are some ingredients that you want to have at a fraction of a percent and any higher would irritate skin of color. So it's not to say, you know, more is better because that's of course not the case, especially for skin of color. So some ingredients that I would want to be at less than 1% would be retinol. I like that at 0.5% unless it's encapsulated. Uh, hyaluronic acid is obviously a fraction of a percent. Some antioxidants such as coenzyme Q10. Preservatives are obviously at about 10th of a percent. Stem cells are often effective at less than 1% too without irritation. Uh, and peptides, different ones come at different percentages. You could have them at 0.5%, which is a fraction of a percent, or all the way up to 10%. So it depends which peptide we're looking at. They all have different therapeutic indexes. So it can be in the lower half of your inky list. Now, roughly, roughly speaking, your cream, the first ingredient is going to be water. Now that could be at anything between 70% up to 95%. If it's a product like the Dr. V Facial Pigmentation Kit, which has got 10 tyrosinase inhibitors in it, you're going to be looking at 70% water because you need to get the rest of the percentages in to make 100%. With um, a cream that maybe has one or two actives, we're looking at more like 95% water often. Not always, but just as a rough guide. Then the next ingredient, if it's a, it could be anything from 5% to 10%. And then the following couple of ingredients will be about 3 to 5%. Now, after this, it tends to be 1% or below. We, we often say you can use phenoxyethanol as like the 1% mark because you can't use more than 1% phenoxyethanol. But again, that's a very rough guide. And you could be, put phenoxyethanol right at the end as well. So, it, you know, that is a bit of a rough guide for you. When you're reading the ingredients list, make sure you're looking for it to, to see the product is safe, safe for skin of color. That means no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, and no essential oils. Don't get confused between fatty alcohol, which are emollients and are great for the skin, something like satiral alcohol, compared to denatured alcohol, which is a short chain alcohol, evaporates quickly and water evaporates from your skin too, so it can really dry the skin. Don't just look for the word alcohol, look for denatured alcohol or ethanol. With uh, essential oils, it can sensitize the skin, and with fragrance, it tends to be at the bottom of the inky list. Things like geranial, um, linalool, um, sometimes I'll just say perfume. I've made a whole video for you just on all the different fragrances that can come up, but they tend to be right at the bottom because they tend to be a fraction of a percent, but they are the number one cause of contact dermatitis. At the skin of color, dermatitis is inflammation of the skin, which can then further lead to hyperpigmentation. And that's the thing I'm most concerned about for our global community. Now, in terms of category of ingredients, uh, silicones are one of my favorite. They tend to end in cone or siloxane. Uh, this is, uh, I use dimethicone. This is the power antioxidant serum that I basically just make for my own face. Uh, it basically smooths out the top layer of skin. It can behave as a solvent too. Uh, it's non-comedogenic and it's great for aging skin. So this is one of my favorite categories of ingredients. 
The next category of actives you should know are the vitamin A family. So that can be anything from retinol palmitate, the, the least irritating, least effective, to retinol, which is the alcohol version, which I like at about 0.5% unless it's encapsulated, then retinaldehyde, which is one of the most effective over-the-counter vitamin A forms, but very expensive, and I love it for skin of color, um, right up to retinoic acid. So you should know those names for the vitamin A family. Vitamin A is basically an antioxidant, and so is the whole vitamin C family, the vitamin C derivatives, right from ascorbic acid, which is pure vitamin C, through to sodium ascorbyl phosphate, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which the ordinary does a good one, but it's constantly run out. <laughs> uh, tetrahexyl decal ascorbate, which is fat soluble and stimulates collagen, one of my favorite forms of vitamin C. There are also other forms of antioxidants, whether it's green tea extract, resveratrol, ferulic acid, vitamin Vitamin E is the most popular in the world, um, the most used ingredient in the world for skincare. So these are all antioxidants. These all mop up free radicals and prevent premature aging happening to the skin. Emollients and occlusive sometimes can be separated, but often the vast majority of the ingredients are really come under both. So emollient smooths out the top layer of skin, so it smooths down the edges so you get a flawless finish. The occlusive basically behaves as a second layer of skin and so prevents transepidermal water loss. So ingredients that fall into these two would be things like um, petrolatum, paraffin, um, ceramide, squalene, mineral oil, shea butter. Um, and so they tend to get used interchangeably, but they are all basically to smooth out the top layer of skin and prevent transepidermal water loss. Then we have humectants. Humectants are water magnets. They hold water in the top layer of skin and really are essential in your moisturizer. So things like glycerin, which is a cheap one, but very effective and non-irritating. Urea is one that we tend to use more for hard skin on the feet, for example. And hyaluronic acid, that's one that we tend to use for anti-aging. Then we have the category of peptides. This this is actually a huge category and is one of my favorite categories because it can penetrate one of the few ingredients that can penetrate into the dermis. It ends in the word peptide, so it's very obvious in the inky. And don't forget, peptides are basically just amino acids joined together. Those are the building blocks for collagen or for elastin. Then the next category are my favorite, obviously, which are the tyrosinase inhibitors. So those are basically calm down the rate of melanin production at the melanocyte, the cell that produces pigment melanin. So those are ingredients such as alpha arbutin, tranexamic acid, um, licorice root extract, kojic dipalmitate, azelaic acid, octodecanoic acid, phytic acid. These are all my favorite ones. The next category would be exfoliating acids. So these tend to be divided into AHA, BHA, and PHA. AHA, my favorite would be mandelic acid or lactic acid. Uh, glycolic, I don't mind it at 5% or less for skin of color, but it's not my favorite uh, option. The second would be your BHA, which is of course your salicylic acid. And then we have PHA, so things like gluconolactone. The next category of ingredients would be anti-inflammatories. And these again are another, I do seem to love all of these categories, but I, all, I really love <laughs> my anti-inflammatories because for us, if your skin is under assault constantly from UV and wind and temperature changes, we actually really need to soothe our skin because otherwise your skin is constantly fighting and not repairing itself. So I'm a big fan of anti-inflammatories, things like panthenol, bisabolol, uh, um, aloe, uh, what else do I tend to use? Allantoin, that's the other one I use a lot in my creams. Then we've got the antibacterials, specifically if you have acne, so that's of course benzyl peroxide where you are poisoning the acne, P. acne's um, bacteria with oxygen because it loves to be in an anaerobic environment. Um, and the other one is azelaic acid. The next category of ingredient would be preservatives. So things like uh, benzyl alcohol and parabens. Parabens are my favorite form of preservative for skin of color because it causes the least amount of contact dermatitis. And since there was a wave of uh, myths about parabens, in fact, marketing companies or cosmetic companies would then say we are now paraben free, you know, further propagating the myth that parabens were bad for you. And what ended up happening is that actually contact dermatitis cases increased because we were using preservatives that were actually irritating our skin. So I would always say actually look for parabens, they're the safest form of preservative and you want to use 
uh, preservatives because without preservatives, you've got fungus and bacteria growing in your product and then you put that on your face and you're going to lead to major issues. The only time you don't need preservatives are in an oil-based formula or in a, in a pure oil because there's no water and so bacteria can't physically grow. So then we've got other ingredients such as solvents um, so or surfactants. So solvents basically is the carrier that actives can um, dissolve into. So water is the most common one, of course. Uh, you can use butylene glycol, um, propendiol. There's, so there's quite a few. Um, then the next category would be viscosity control. So you this basically will increase the thickness of your cream. So you don't want a lotion and you want it to be a thicker cream, then you would use something like xanthine gum or carbamap. That's what those are for. Then we have um, buffering agents, so such as um, trientholamine, which basically you want to make sure you control the pH. Before, after you've finished making a cream, you have you use your, your gauge to see what the pH of the cream is. And ideally you want it to be, you know, 4.5 to 6.5 if you're trying to create a cream that's skin identical. So my aim with this channel is I don't expect you to learn all these words. My aim really is to become your glue, your Google Translate for skincare for skin of color. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored. It is purely a reference library for us and for our children to come and learn the ingredients that we have in our skincare. I think the game is a little bit rigged against us because a lot of these products were not designed with skin of color in mind. You know, the vast majority. I would say over 95% of skincare was not designed for skin of color in mind because the irritation levels would be too high when we're dealing with millions of us, you know? And that's something I, I don't take lightly. You know, we've had almost 13 million views on this channel. And for me, even 1% of people getting irritation and damage to the skin barrier is too much. So that's why I always err on the side of caution. And this really is why education and empowerment is essential for us and for our children, because no one's going to do that for us. You know, I will do it because <laughs> I love doing it. But this is, you know, it's it really is onus is on us to know what we're buying with our hard earned money. Don't forget, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. Please do write down below which other videos you want me to make for you. Don't forget to download your free guide for skincare for skin of color. The link is also down below. And follow me on Instagram, which is Dr. Benita Rattan or Skincare by Dr. V. And also on TikTok, which is Dr. Benita Rattan. Thank you. Bye.